Hi everyone, it's Vossi. Welcome back to my channel, V Birchwood. Today we're going to be talking about the essential things to keep in mind if you want to get started with historical sewing. A lot of people have the drive, the passion, and the interest to get started with historical sewing, but it can feel really frustrating and overwhelming and even sometimes paralyzing to know how and where to get started. Oftentimes, just having a few tips in mind of what to focus on or just knowing how to take that first leap can completely change your relationship with building a new skill. Just to put it into perspective that anyone can undertake historical sewing, I made this entire garment after only sewing since August 2020. And this is all completely hand sewn. I made it all from start to finish. And it just goes to show that anybody can get good at historical sewing, even in a short period of time, if you just know where to direct your attention, and also if you just have the passion and put in the hours and the practice that goes along with it. So the very first thing you want to think about is what are your goals with historical sewing? For instance, is your goal to make beautiful, historically accurate clothing that is maybe hand sewn and uses more accurate techniques? Or is your goal to perhaps move on to using a machine and doing historical clothing that way or maybe making historically inspired clothing instead or even history bounding? There are so many approaches to historical sewing that you can take and not one approach is going to fit for everybody. And because of that, it's really important to sit down and figure out what your goals are so that way you can know what sort of projects attract your attention. It's especially important to decide whether you want to approach historical sewing with machine or hand sewing because both methods are gonna require completely different materials to have on hand and it's just going to completely change the way that you sew. One of the big things you'll want to do when you're just starting out is to invest in the tools that you're going to need for your craft. Now I'm not going to go into what tools you'll need in this video, but I did make a video recently, which I'll link here in the cards, and it explains the tools you're going to need specifically if you want to go the hand sewing route with historical clothing. Having all the right sewing tools just makes your life a million times easier and you don't always need to buy a bunch of different materials, which is why I really like this other video I made because it really helps to break down the essentials and that way you don't end up spending money on stuff that you don't actually end up using. Another video that I made recently was about the essential hand sewing stitches that you'll need to make historical clothing. Now this is a very important step to learn if you're planning on taking the hand sewing route and honestly, even if you're planning on taking the machine sewing route, it's also useful because there are certain things with historical clothing that you just can't finish with a machine. So regardless, you're going to need to learn some of the hand sewing stitches. A good example of this is with the finishing stitch, the flat felt seam, which I show in the seven essentials video. And this one is really incredible because it helps to give a clean finish to your garment. And you can definitely do this on a machine, but it actually feels a lot more historically accurate just by finishing a garment with a hand sewn stitch like this. This might feel like a pretty obvious tip, but utilize YouTube as a resource if you get stuck on a certain part when you're sewing with a pattern, for instance. It seems pretty self-explanatory that if you're watching an instructional video here right now on YouTube that you would probably use YouTube for other things too, but it's nice to just have the reminder that basically everything you need will likely be here on YouTube for free. When I first started sewing historical clothing, I got trapped on certain parts and patterns all the time. And if it weren't for YouTube, I probably would have been pulling my hair out. I honestly don't know how people used to sew before YouTube existed because did they just like call up their relatives who would sew and try and get tips from them? I, I don't know how they would have done it every time that they would have gotten stuck on a problem. With that comes the next tip, which is form good habits from the get-go, so that way you're not having to undo bad habits later on in your sewing process. A few really good habits to get started with is to use a thimble, that's one of them. Another one is to mark everything from your pattern, because you want to make sure all of your notches, your lines are getting transferred over onto your fabric, because it just makes putting everything together that much easier and you won't be freaking out over why doesn't this piece fit? Why aren't these notches lined up? Because everything will be so well marked that it won't really affect 
some of those more challenging bits. A third habit is to prep and pre-shrink all of your fabric, especially the ones that you're going to be washing all the time. Now with silk and certain materials that have to be dry cleaned or spot cleaned, you're going to want to just treat those exactly the way that you will once the garment is made because you don't want the fabric to change at all um, after you've already put it all together. That's incredibly frustrating when you've made a garment for, I don't know, 100 hours hand sewn and then you go to wash it and it shrinks by 10% and then it doesn't fit you anymore. <laughs> And finally, the fourth really good habit to get into from the get-go is to finish all of your raw edges. It might feel like a daunting task to have completed this whole garment, made it wearable, and then you have to go back and finish all your raw edges. It feels like this incredibly overwhelming thing that you have to also do, but it does prolong the life of your garment and you don't want all of that hard work to go to waste after five or 10 washes. You want to be making a garment that's going to last you for 20, 30 plus years. I mean, still to this day, there are some well-sewn extant garments that are available. Maybe they weren't worn as often as we wear our clothes now, um, but they're that well made and constructed that they're still around to this day. You want to be making garments that are at that level of quality from the get-go if you can. You will be saving a lot of money and time in the long run. If your goal with this historical sewing undertaking is to be historically accurate, then choose a very simple but still historically accurate project to begin with. One of my first projects was a blue wool cotton blend Regency day dress. And Regency day dresses are a great option because they're very simple in design, quite flowy, they're not overly tailored, and they're quite quick actually to construct. So by choosing a project that is still challenging enough that you'll learn, but not so challenging that you'll be overwhelmed and just give up altogether, you're going to be doing yourself a favor because you won't be biting off more than you can chew, but you'll also be encouraging yourself to grow. The next point is very, very important. If you're going to take anything away from this video, make sure you take this away from it. And that is to make a mock-up or a fitting before cutting into your actual fabric. Even extremely experienced dressmakers are still making a mock-up because they know that it can be very deceiving. Even if you know your own measurements well and you're familiar with cutting and pattern grading, there's still always going to be room for error because we're human, we're not going to be perfect. We're not machines that can just cut everything to a perfect formula. So by making a mock-up garment, you're going to be saving yourself time and money because if you happen to not make a garment that fits, you didn't just ruin your extremely expensive fashion fabric when you could have used cheap muslin or calico instead. One thing I really like to do to sort of reduce waste is to actually make my mock-up in my lining fabric because um, normally the lining is going to be something a little bit cheaper like linen rather than wool or silk. So then if it doesn't work out, I will usually just trim directly on the lining fabric until I'm happy with the result. Though with this method, I would always recommend if you're deciding between two sizes of your pattern, go with the bigger size because then there's not going to be an issue of it being too small for you and having to add on fabric. That way also you don't have a bunch of muslin pieces that you have no use for after you've made your garment just laying around your sewing room or your house and you actually get to have a use for your original mock-up. Next, you'll want to mark everything. And I mentioned this earlier in the video, but really you want to make sure that every single thing gets transferred over. So that means make sure you mark your darts, your symbols, your notches, your cutting line, your seam allowances, everything needs to be well marked and documented even if it's time consuming. It does save you a lot of frustration in the long run. And finally, get familiar with your canvas, which in this case is going to be your fabric. You should become familiar with the different types of fabric that you're going to be using because you want to know how to properly treat every single type of fabric. I'm going to make a sort of fabric care crash course video soon in the future. So once that is up, I will link it down in the description below. 
so that way you can refer back to it. Just to cover it briefly, a good rule of thumb is that you should always pre-shrink everything, um, except for, of course, silk taffeta needs to be dry cleaned or spot cleaned um, and can't really be touched with water because it'll completely change the consistency of it. Um, but when it comes to cotton, linen, and most wools, you can throw them in the machine, but with wool you have to make sure it's either on a special setting or it's hand washed without a lot of movement. Um, and people often think that wool is a very difficult material to wash, but it's actually one of the easier ones because it, it's very strong and it can take a lot. You just have to know sort of what to look for and to make sure that you don't do a few things like for instance put it on a cotton setting um, at a very very high temperature it's, it's best to use a wool setting at kind of a moderate temperature instead and of course once your fabrics come out of the washing machine make sure that you press them so that way any other possible shrinkage in the fibers happens because when you're pressing it the inserted heat will just cause a lot of fibers to just sort of shrink up like this and it can actually change the measurements of a piece of fabric pretty significantly. You're going to be ironing your garment at some point in the future so of course you want to make sure that the garment is already used to being ironed. So my parting words is that there is not just one way to reach the same result in sewing. It is useful however though to learn it the way that the instructions or the person teaching you is doing everything. That way, once you get the rules down, you can go and you can learn to break the rules and find a method that's better for you. A lot of experts talk about needing to know rules before you learn how to break them. And I do think that this is very much the way with sewing because it's important to know some of the basics and then once you've mastered those skills, you can go and find your own methods of creating your own madness. <laughs> there will be ways that you'll naturally want to gravitate towards and go and run with those. Don't limit yourself with sewing. And if you want to experiment with something, just go for it. If you're taking on this historical sewing journey, please feel free to message me um, either with Instagram or just right here on YouTube in the comments. And I always wanna do my very best to help all of you with your own projects because that's a very fulfilling thing for me as well. I want to show people that historical sewing is accessible to anybody that wants to undertake it. And what better way to do that than to actually help people and make sure that if you get stuck on something, I can do my very best to try and Give you some advice. I can't promise that I'm going to know the answer, but I will at least do my best to try. As always, I'm so grateful to all of you for watching these videos and supporting this channel, and please do subscribe if you would like to learn more information about historical sewing or just in general wearing historical clothing. I usually post videos every other Thursday, but sometimes I like to post three in a month just to get some additional content out there. Thank you so much again for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.